Hi, I'm Emily Merrill, and this is Razor Bob with a Bang. It's my friend Donna. This is right at the precise moment that she disclosed to me that she has been using box dye for a year after um, having some damage imposed by a professional. Uh, she had a lot of breakage, lost a lot of length in her hair. Um, so I'm taking that information and having it inform my decisions about her hair color. So what I'm creating here is an accent with her bang. Um, so we will see a pop of brighter color. My sectioning goes from um, about parallel to the corner of her left eye, diagonally down to about the left side of the bridge of her nose, and it is a triangle. Um, working in back-to-back -back slices through this entire triangle, or you know, creating essentially a block of color. I am using Blondor powder lightener with 20 volume. Also will not be processing more than 25 minutes. And once we hit that point, we'll see where we're at and we're gonna work with that. The original plan was um, a pastel pink here. However, now I'm having that knowledge about the history of her hair color, um, I've had to alter my decision. So always taking into account, um, always being willing to be flexible with your plans um, and adjust and develop and adapt as needed. Okay, so back to back slices here, very thin sections. I wanna get as close to the root as possible, um, all the way through the foil, roots to ends, full even saturation of lightener. As I approach the very last section, I am going to do a weave. Um, I'd like to create a soft transition from this block of color to the rest of her bang um, and also that very top crown area where it's all going to kind of connect in that neighborhood. So it looks like one last slice here and then a weave for our very next one. So Donna's a longtime friend of mine. I always love doing her hair because she's open. Um, she doesn't typically come with many demands or limitations. She allows me um, complete creative freedom, which is always fun. So in thinking about what I would be doing with her hair, I developed um, a plan, a blueprint for a haircut, um, and some formula ideas for her color, which I now um, have altered just a little bit. Um, the integrity of her hair is utmost important at this point. Um, her hair is fine. She doesn't have a ton of it. She does have a nice wave. Um, I need to create a look that she can wear natural without having to do too much styling. Uh, we talked a little bit about how much time she's willing to put into her hair. And she told me she's willing to, you know, blow dry and style her bangs um, and let the rest air dry and occasionally flat iron if she's going out or wants a change. So for the rest of Donna's hair, we decided, you know, we really love this color that she has, this magenta. It is great for her complexion. It really makes her blue eyes pop. Um, and so we don't want to change it too much. I am adding, um, my goal is to add some depth to the root to do to give a little bit of a melt you know darker to lighter melt so where it's at now although it's a very beautiful tone um, it is very hollow because it's lacking um, the level and the natural tones um, that typically contribute to a color like this and really you know make it look healthy um, and and fully saturated so the formula that I have created for her roots I used uh, Wella Cholesterol Perfect, two parts, six, seven, six stroke seven, one part, four stroke seven, seven. Okay, so those are my red browns creating the, the level and the base. Well, double developer. And then after th I mixed that, I added two inches of uh, Supermix Zero Stroke Four Five and Supermix Zero Stroke Eight Eight. So that red violet, I definitely want um, to have that really rich red violet undertone. Although I did use Clest on Perfect, 
Um, the nice thing about the Wella products is that you can use them interchangeably. So I ultimately created a demi-permanent by mixing it with the 13 volume developer and the mixing ratio is one to two. So with that kind of consistency, you definitely wanna use a bottle for application. Um, it's too loose really to do a good bowl and brush. It ends up kind of creating a bit of a mess. And you know, whenever we're working with color, we don't want to burden ourselves with, you know, the, the possibility that we could be getting color in places that we don't want it. Um, especially like this type of uh, bottle applicator. The top of it is nice and flat. I believe this is a Wella color applicator. Um, don't quote me on that. I'm not sure. It's got a nice flat side to the top. And so I can use that part of the bottle to essentially thumb in or um, spread the color in the root. Again, this is great for keeping my hands clean. You know, if I'm using my fingers to spread the color, um, I run the risk of transferring it to other areas of the hair. So love to stay neat and clean. You'll always see my, um, you know, my bowls and brushes are very neat and clean. Uh, I tend to be a little bit of a clumsy person. Um, people know that about me. I typically at least drop one thing during each service. Um, you know, it's something I've embraced and accepted about myself. So now I can, you know, make adjustments ahead of time. So what I'm doing now that the application is complete in her regrowth area is I'm going through section by section and I'm combing the color down um, just about an inch and a half. Um, my goal is to create a melt here with the color. And so I'm using the fine tooth of the comb, combing it down almost to the mid, mid shaft of the hair. So with working with reds, um, any type of red, you know, the, the idea of keeping really when we're pulling color through just tone on the ends. Um, if we are doing, you know, a client that has, you know, a 6R type of color and we apply the regrowth area and then pull the same formula through the ends, we'll essentially brown out, you know, take over the ends, the, the redness and the brightness that we want throughout. So here with my next formula, I'm working from the bottom up, taking small sections, um, applying this formula from about an inch, inch and a half down. You know, the previous formula was, was kind of pulled to. I am applying a bit of color, massaging it in with my fingers, um, melting it with the previous, and pulling down to about an inch or two from the ends. I want to keep that vibrant, magenta color at the ends. I don't want to disrupt that. did was I took my original formula that was almost gone. I had about 25 to 30 grams total mixed left and I added 10 grams of 10 stroke six. Okay. Um, much more transparent. No, not, no real level in there and added, um, two parts color touch developer, the semi-permanent developer, and then an inch of the Supermix Zero Stroke 4.5 and a half an inch of the Supermix Zero Stroke 80 to give, again, just more of a kick of that red violet. Um, and I'm just combing that through, creating a nice color melt, enhancing and maintaining the red violet. Now, after the 25 minutes of lightener on our triangle section, what we ended with was about a level eight, um, definitely not the pastel I would have liked, um, or I'm sorry, the, the pale canvas I would have liked for a pastel, but we're working with it. So what I've done is I've mixed the Joico Color Intensity Pink with the Joico Bond Strengthening Color Treatment um, to dilute the pink, okay? So I wanted, you know, I, I definitely wanted the brightness, um, didn't want it super dark. So by adding a conditioner to the direct dye, um, what it does is dilutes the color, creates it um, a little bit softer version of it. Um, love the Joico. It's the damage, um, defy damage line that that color treatment is, and I just love it so much. It's 
perfect to add onto the pre-lightened ends uh, to give a nice little conditioning treatment as it processes. Here we are, haircut time. Now, for Donna, she lost a ton of length, right, we talked about. Um, she's at a point where it's grown out to a reasonable length. Um, there's really no shape in it. She definitely doesn't want it too short. The map I created for this haircut is a razor bob, okay, and where it starts is with a horizontal um, sectioning to create a square graduation in the back. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to take thin horizontal sections, use very short strokes of the razor, um, starting with about a 10 degree elevation in the center. And as I move outward, dropping that elevation a tiny bit, a little closer towards zero. And what you'll see is with each section that I move up, I lift the elevation a little bit. Okay, short strokes from center to the outside, the very end of the section. Um, a bit of this is cut out. I did discover after uh, filming this that I was so caught up in conversation um, with my friend that I, I neglected to pay attention to where my back was with the camera, and so here we are. So now as I'm moving up through each section, I am continuing the square graduation, pulling the horizontal section directly towards me, short strokes as I work through the section, ultimately pointing down. When you see that last section that I did, my finger was pointing down. Um, when I'm on the other side, my, when I take this section, you might see, I'm not sure, that my outside knuckle is pointing down as I move through the side. Okay, little bit of triangle shape here, not a lot. Um, I find that using a more square shape in a haircut like this really helps to maintain the outline um, for a bob, right? So sometimes our instinct is to get in there with a triangle graduation, and then we end up with the holes around the ears. And if we're really trying to create a bob or the bob look, um, that kind of takes away from it. So a nice square graduation is always a great idea for um, a style like this. So in the beginning, I did section out the top, a diamond on top. Um, that will be a disconnected section. And so what I'm doing here is I'm continuing to work up and horizontal all the way through up to that section. And now I am going to leave out the section right above the ear from that recession down to the ear. That is also going to be disconnected. So you'll see that I will be kind of sectioning that out and not including it here in my graduation. The reason that I'm doing that is I want to maintain as much length and weight in those side areas. So for anyone who's tried to grow out a short haircut or a really damaged kind of short layers, um, knows that that section, you know, because of how high the hairline is, it, it seems, it feels like it takes decades to get it to a length um, that works for a longer haircut. And so we really want to keep that intact. Um, and so as she grows out her hair, she's got a nice solid outline. Um, it's really, with a bob, it's about a nice solid outline. It can be soft, it can be blunt, it can be, you know, a lot of different things, but it has to be solid all the way around. Um, having a little gap there, a little um, exposure of the ears, really not um, cohesive with the style. So, as I finish that back section, I am moving into the sides. And what I'm doing with the sides here is, again, taking horizontal sections, okay? It's going to be a square shape. Um, I will round out the, or I'm sorry, soften the corners in a little bit, but um, this is going to be round. So combing it straight down, standing directly in front of it. I'm using that neighboring section of hair, um, not really as a guide, but as a, uh, a point of connection, okay? And again, very, very soft strokes of the razor. I want the softness at the bottom. However, I, I do want a strong line, okay? 
straight down. I'm holding it, you know, pretty close to zero degrees, tiny bit of elevation because I do want it to, um, the sides to have, you know, the softness that the back does with the graduation. Okay, so working up, always tape, taking that neighboring side um, as a connection point, combing straight down, soft strokes. Okay, the cutting line for this section, I am using the jawline as a reference and placing my cutting line directly under it. So as I go through, if there's any like straggling kind of hairs from the razor, I can take my razor and hold the hair against my finger and essentially shave off um, what I don't want. So you, you catch in peaks of that. You know, I'm really disappointed that uh, it's a lot of my arm and back here, but I think you can um, see the general point of what I'm doing with each section. Okay, so moving to the other side, I'm gonna repeat the same thing, moving a little faster here. Um, really, at this point, was wishing that I had asked Donna to take her earrings off, but we're in too deep now. It makes no point. I have to, I don't have to, but I'm just going to work with it. Pretty confident in my abilities to be able to, um, adapt when there's an earring there. And if it, if it were to a point where, you know, the earring wouldn't allow me to, to do what I needed to do, I would ask her to take it off. Um, sometimes it's just about making things easier. Checking my balance, all right. I'm seeing, and you know, take off, shave off a tiny little length on this side. All right, so taking out that top diamond section, all right. I am for anyone who's familiar with the sweep. It's, it was a an element kind of coined by this by Sassoon um, education. And basically, what it does, I, I'm using that element in this haircut because it fits perfectly is taking that um, back part from the recession, vertical sections, and taking them straight, taking it straight out from the head um, with kind of a 90 degree cutting line. Then take a horizontal section at the top of that and create a guide for the front with each horizontal section over directing back to the previous. Okay, not a ton of length coming out here. I just want some clean healthy ends onto the bangs. Most important part of this haircut, the focal point, right here where, where we have that pop of pink. Okay, with the razor, again, as with the rest of the haircut, short strokes, okay, these bangs, I am I'm creating a soft bang, however, I do want to see a line, I need it to be intact um, for this look. So short, short little strokes here, um, in order to create a straight bang, one that doesn't get longer around the edges, you really have to follow the head shape. So you'll see by my body position and the sections that I'm taking that I'm working quite round, right? Straight down, not over directing everything to the center. If I were to do that, it would create a bang that gets longer around the edges. Um, definitely a cool, cool technique for some looks. Not what I'm, not what I'm hoping for here. So working around with the head shape. I really want that straight bang to um, come right to that length on the sides um, and create a really fun corner in there right by her eyes. Again, creating elements that are flattering to my client. Okay. So you'll see me take a lot of time to get my sections here with the bang and that's because I really want for the fringe to um, work with how her hair falls. So I don't want her to go home and style her own hair and have short bangs being pushed back or, um, long hair being kind of hanging over the front. So taking care to take that into consideration as I'm cutting the bang. All right. Wrap dry here. So like I said, Donna likes to let her hair air dry. Um, she has waves for the purpose of, um, Finishing this haircut, I'm going to blow it straight. Here we are, a little flat iron. Love, love this shape already. I could let her walk out just like this. However, that's not as fun. All right, so starting at the focal point. Now, loose point cut. 
carving out that nice corner. You'll see I spend a lot of time with that corner. I want it to be clean no matter how the hair falls. I don't want little stragglers sticking out. I think that takes away from the haircut. Um, so I'm being very careful to make it nice and clean. Okay. Now I do a point cut with the whole bang and then I lift the top layer and do a point cut. I typically do that when I want to soften up a bang a little on the bottom, but if I need to remove weight, um, kind of leave that bottom out, take a section a bit higher and do a point cut. Right here doing some slides. Donna's hair is a lot heavier right here. She also has a calyx, so I have to be careful. Um, this part is going to pop up, as you see, it is already. I made sure that I didn't work out that calyx too much when I was blow drying and flat ironing. Um, it would deceive me. It would make me think that it's longer than it is and I might cut too much and when she goes home and styles it herself she ends up with this kind of real short area of her bags it's not what we want never flattering on anybody we're gonna work on the back um, using a little texture spray to kind of see where, where everything's falling now again I didn't work out the calyx too hard I know that we really want a nice result walking out of the salon or the studio um, but I think it's so, so important to honor what the hair is actually going to do. I want Donna to go home and be able to style it and have it look great without having to do a lot of extra work um, simply because I, I needed, um, you know, the satisfaction of having her walk out that day with everything perfect, right? So you'll see that this outline, um, there's, some, there's a little bit of wave, there's a little bit of calic. I am customizing the bottom the outline of this haircut to compensate for that. Okay, using the scissor to skin a little bit underneath to shave those hairs. Um, that disconnected part, I don't want to take short. I don't want to connect. Um, I love the idea of having a little bit of that wispiness kind of fall over the top. Uh, I think it's such a nice touch, and you can see it because the color, the color of those ends are lighter. All right, so we talked a little bit before about creating this square um, to keep a nice strong outline around. Uh, what you will see me do is soften up this corner um, because we don't need it now, okay? We kept our length. We we're able to keep um, the outline intact by using that square graduation technique. However, keeping a corner there um, isn't necessary. And I feel like when you soften up that corner, it really kind of brings everything together. Okay, just checking everything dry. Right, this is what sets us apart from your normal stylist blow dry you send you out if you know. Um, so here we go again on the other side same thing right checking that that one length in the front seeing how it's connecting to the back and softening up that corner that we don't need anymore okay let's see how that's going to lay nice and flat okay so even though we want the softness here we also want a clean line. So you will see me kind of go straight across and what looks like a blunt cut. Um, however, I'm doing it just at the very bottom. All right, if I, if I were to go higher, um, it would take out that softness. I'm just doing the very, very, very bottom. I really love how everything's coming together. Because of our calic back there, we see how it kind of pushes all the hair into one area and creates a little bit of weight. So working that out because of the the damage and the short shortness throughout you know Donna does have a lot of a lot of layers a lot of soft texture already within on the insides of her hair um, as you can see it's like one of my favorite things um, 
and you go through and you really look at the texture that exists there. Really enjoyed doing this haircut and color on Donna. She's so much fun. Don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials and follow me on social media. Thanks.